This property I, I discovered driving to my Chinese doctor's place and um, I saw this church was for sale. So I found the building, fell in love with it, always wanted a church and I collected a lot of religious icons. So all the icons you see in the building, I already collected them, they didn't come with this building. Downstairs is like an extension of my lounge room, you know, as time's gone on, as every day goes by here, I keep bringing something else downstairs and then go over it. My art's about broadening lateral vision, you know, all the projects I've done from designing my own stage productions are all about how do I create the theatre that's different, that's unique. But of course I'm feeding off the history of theatre, I'm feeding off all this different stuff, but how I put it into a new box. Painting is a metaphor for a person's life. In your life you make marks, in your life you make gestures, you create stuff, it fall, it dies, you re recreate stuff and in the end you have a painting, you know, your tombstone or your life as a memory is a painting and people look at you and look at the painting that you made and that's how they remember you. They remember you in reference to what that painting means to them. They don't really, no one knows you the same way as somebody else. The art classes downstairs are all, like, as you could probably see today, they're all transparent. So people come in, have a coffee and they watch an art class going on and some people come in and they go, hey, you know, I'm going to do one hour of drawing this week and that's my creative time, but I say, if you think about that one hour of drawing too much, it's not going to be creative because you'll spend the whole time in your left brain worrying about getting it right. The way we live in the West in general I don't think is very conducive to feeding our souls. We tend to have these separate houses and that's mine and that's yours, that belongs to him and you can't go there because that belongs to that person. And, you know, and I think you know, I have a real interest in you know, tri tribal cultures and past societies and stuff before agriculture, before this ownership thing came in and how we lived. And I think we probably generally lived a much better lifestyle because we shared. It, it's, a, it's a process for me to, to build something and then having to let go of parts of it because that's, that's a challenging for me every day because I come from a society of ownership. Being entrepreneurial on the one hand is like, there's a negativity attached to that too, especially in Australia, I know, because hey, I'm building a gallery, I'm doing this, but it's all part of being creative because life's creative. I'm very internally driven, you know, and some people are externally driven, some people I think are more internally driven. I don't need someone to come up and go, come on, get out of bed, let's go, we've got work to do, because I, I can do that to myself. You know, by building some sort of community or some sort of, you know, hub here, it's about trying to find my own kind of tribal connection to people. Well, I'd love it to live on. I think it's, even though it's taken a long time to get to this point of finishing the building and getting it open and now it's the beginnings of the next chapter. It'd be great in 10 years time or 15 years time if I run my race, that enough energy had been built up in here to draw enough other energy into it that it became other people's passions that it would continue in some context like it is now. If its fundamental philosophy was always about trying to create a place where people could come together and do things and interact, people from different denominations, from different backgrounds, different age groups, then that would be a big win. I'm Anthony Breslin and I'm an artist.